Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 22. And in this segment, we're going to take a look at some characteristic photographs that we might see in the atmosphere. That is some pretty commonly accepted shapes of the photographs and what those usually mean for uh, thunderstorms that form in such an environment. So we'll go ahead and start off with something that is especially interesting, uh, where you have a nice clockwise curvature in the photograph. So that is, as you, uh, trace this, as you trace this photograph out, you get sort of a clockwise curvature. And this indicates that you've got uh, veering winds present in the atmosphere. And as it turns out, if you've got strong veering winds, that's mostly that's very favorable for uh, cyclonic supercells, that is, right-moving supercells. And typically, the stronger the curvature in the photograph, the more directional wind shear that's present, which means your thunderstorms are going to be uh, rotating much more intensely than if you had, say, a unidirectional wind profile. That is, the wind's not changing much. Uh, the wind direction is not changing very much as you go up in the atmosphere. And usually, uh, when you see the strong clockwise curvature, that's a signal that you've got significant streamwise vorticity. So again, that's something that we covered in lab. That means the vorticity vector and the storm relative motion vector are pretty much pointing in the same direction, which, long story short, that basically just means that the thunderstorms really want to rotate. They are uh, going to be spinning pretty rapidly if they've got a lot of streamwise vorticity. And if you're going to be looking for an environment that's conducive for a tornado outbreak, Ideally, you wouldn't want to see a photograph that looks something like this. Very strong curvature, especially in the lowest uh, one kilometer. So you want to see winds, winds, uh, wind direction that's changing very rapidly as you go up in the atmosphere. And you also want to see uh, very strong winds throughout, the, uh, throughout much of the troposphere. So clockwise curvature in the photograph is most ideal for tornado events. If you're going to get tornadoes, this would be the, uh, the photograph that you would ideally look for. Uh, counterclockwise curvature, something that's not as widely discussed, but it's something that you can get in the atmosphere. Uh, if you've got any sort of counterclockwise curvature in the in a photograph, that means you've got uh, winds that are uh, turning counterclockwise with height, which indicates you've got a layer of backing winds. And usually, uh, if you've got a layer of backing winds, that means you've got cold air advection. Now, if you happen to see something like this in, say, a warm sector, in the, in the warm sector, that is the area of warm, moist area ahead of a cyclone, that could be an environment that's favorable for anticyclonic supercells, but again, very unusual to get too many anticyclonic supercells because they're usually pulling their fuel supply from air that's north of them, which means they're going to be pulling in cooler air usually, and that means that they're going to be, uh, yeah, they're going to be pulling in air that's more stable and that's not as conducive for a supercell thunderstorm if it's pulling in stable air. And then a straight photograph which is basically a photograph that the, the wind direction doesn't change very much as you go up in the atmosphere. So this typically indicates a unidirectional wind profile. And this is something that is somewhat common to see in uh, parts of the warm season, but you can also see this in other parts of the, in, in other months as well, in other seasons. And uh, usually when you see an environment like this, this is a, uh, indicates that you are going to have splitting storms. And uh, yeah, splitting storms, basically you have a thunderstorm that goes up and then it ends up splitting into two, one half becoming more cyclonic, the other half becoming more anticyclonic, uh, which is kind of an interesting mechanism. You can get tornadoes from a straight hardograph, but it's much harder. It's a much more uh, lengthy process than if you have strong clockwise curvature. Uh, there will be a link in the description below about uh, sort of illustrating an anim It's an animation that sort of illustrates the storm splitting process occurring and how you can get a cyclonically rotating thunderstorm and an anticyclonically rotating thunderstorm. And usually you will see that in an environment where the hardograph is really straight, a unidirectional wind profile. And then sort of an informal term that I use is an S-shaped hodograph. And this is, uh, is the reason why I call it S-shaped is because it kind of looks like an S, uh, either a backwards S or a forwards S. And this is something that you'll typically see in a uh, environment characterized by a layer of veering winds, and then on top of that, a layer of backing winds, and then on top of that, a layer of veering winds again. And sometimes that's abbreviated as a veer back veer profile or VBV. And if you see a if you see a wind profile that looks like that, uh, you're gonna have you might have supercells, but more than likely you're gonna have messier storm modes. And a lot of times this means that your storms are going to struggle to remain isolated because you've got uh, the wind profile just kind of messes with the storms. They can't, they can't stay as organized as, the, as they ideally would like to. You can get tornadoes in environments like this, but usually uh, when you see a photograph that looks like this, that's a signal that you're going to have messy and more disorganized storm modes than if you had uh, a nice clockwise curvature in the photograph. And then another photograph type that I like to uh, refer to is, I like to call it a crumpled photograph. Uh, 
because that's just what it looks like. In the case of this hodograph, you can see how the, the line of the hodograph really doesn't get very far away from the origin at all. Uh, all the points that are plotted are very close to the origin, which means you've got a very weak wind field present in the atmosphere and not much in the way of wind shear. So this is an uh, indication that you've got a barotropic atmosphere, which means if you're going to have thunderstorms in this environment, more than likely they're going to be single cell thunderstorms. But that's going to do it on this other segment for hodographs. And in the next segment, we will be continuing lecture 22 and talking more about uh, this severe weather topics that we've been covering. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.